Hey guys, I'm Bobby Childs from AdventuresInWhiskey.com. Thanks so much for watching. So we're continuing our series of luxury blends uh, from the three big houses, Chivas Regal, uh, Dewars, and Johnny Walker. And we're looking at their, their, their luxury blends, so the ones that sit in the $200 plus dollar range. Uh, for Chivas Regal, it's the new Altus, uh, which is a blended malt. For Dewars, it's Dewars Signature. And Johnny Walker, it's the famous Blue Label. Uh, which a lot of people sort of consider uh, the luxury whiskey. Um, and I'm not talking about, you know, the, the, one, the single malts that cost hundreds of, th hundreds of thousands of dollars. Not there is hundreds of thousands. Thousands of dollars, whatever it is, it's way too much. Um, and I do have a King George V, uh, Johnny Walker, which I'll get to at some point, which is a lot more expensive than this. But in terms of their sort of their color lineup, their core lineup, uh, this sits at the top. Um, the reason I pulled Red Label out is to show that Johnny Walker is a global master. Um, this right here is the biggest selling whiskey around the world, period. Um, but for me, it's a mixer. It really is. It's, it's meant to be in cocktails. I don't drink Johnny Walker Red neat. Uh, unless I go to an event and that's the only scotch they have, then sure, I'll drink it. But if it's, there, have to, there has to be like no other whiskey around. Um, and I'll drink it and eat, or on the rocks, or mixed in a cocktail. Um, but when I'm at home, uh, surrounded by hundreds of whiskeys, I don't reach for Johnny Walker. I'll reach for Dewar's White Label. I'll reach for Shiva's Regal 12. But I never reach for Johnny Walker Red Label. Uh, the one I sip neat is blue or Black Label, which is 12 years old. And I'd show you the bottle, but it's uh, almost empty. It's sitting in the back somewhere. Anyway, Johnny Walker Blue. Uh, I last reviewed this on my website back in 2015. And they sent me a little mini bottle that's somewhere. But I'm out. And I joked online that my wife actually asked me to go buy her bottle of Johnny Walker Blue Label. Really. Um, which I would, but you know. Um, so Diageo was kind enough to, they, they saw the, my, my tweet and they saw I was out and they actually sent me a bottle, this bottle of Johnny Walker Blue and they engraved it, especially for me, which is kind of really, really sweet of them. Um, so this is the first time I'm actually opening the bottle of Johnny Walker Blue. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about it as I'm opening. So Johnny Walker Blue, like I mentioned before, is sort of the luxury whiskey when people think luxury whiskeys. Um, there's no age statement on it, um, but it features some of Diageo's prime Johnny Walker malts including probably Cardew. Um, I bet there's some Kleinlish in here. Um, I bet there's some Kalila or Talisker in here. Uh, the rumor used to be there was uh, some Port Ellen in here. I know for sure they advertised Port Ellen in the King George the fifth, but they really don't say what goes in here. All they say is sort of it's rare, uh, one in 10,000 casks. Um, everyone sort of knows what Blue Label is, right? Um, and everyone sort of says the same thing, it's overrated. Oh, that's nice. Um, I like Johnny Walker Blue. Um, I'll get to price in a minute. Let's, let's talk about taste and smell specifically. It smells really nice. It's got that typical Johnny Walker, fruity, smoky, peaty profile. Um, there's some toffee on the nose. There's some sort of dried fruits, a little bit of nuts. Some citrus, definitely some orange, orange zest. And there's a, 
there's a slight peat smoke in the back, sort of buried in the back. As well as a little vegetable, vegetal note. Sort of smells like cauliflower. That could be me. Could be having an off day. There's a little sherry in there somewhere, I think. But right off the bat, it's it's much more complex than on the nose than Shivers Regal. I'm sorry, than uh, than Dewar's signature. Um, for that one, the nose was a bit muted. This one, it's much easier to smell. There's more stuff going on in here. Let's give it a taste. There's a lot more going on here, like I said, uh, on a palate as well as a nose compared to Dewar's signature. Um, there's a sort of a sort of an old malt, an old grain. Um, there's uh, a little bit of vanilla. Uh, there's a little a bittersweet note, a um, little nutty note. Um, and again, that, that smoke, that peat smoke, isn't in, uh, intense like it is for like, a, uh, say, a Lagavulin, for example, or Talisker. It intermingles well with the rest of the, the flavors in here. There's a little bit of an orange, like orange oil, uh, creeping in mid palate. Uh, those fruits sort of carry on throughout. There's a the toffee sort of carries on and sort of starts to die out. The back of the palate going in towards the finish. There's uh, again that the the, the 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 peat smoke sort of comes in a bit, um, but not strong. Along with like a slightly astringent oak, uh, some oak tannins. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of older whiskey in there. There's probably some younger whiskeys. It's still a bit vibrant, um, but it's it's refined. The finish. It's a lot longer than Dewar's signature. Um, there is uh, a little bit of a kind of sour fruit, uh, not citrus, sort of a, maybe a jam with a little bit of citrus squeezed in. Uh, you get a little bit of that smoke, uh, like an ashy smoke, uh, instead of a, versus like a wood fire or something like that, um, or wood smoke, I mean. Um, and then there's sort of a, sort of a bittersweet malt. Oh all sort of combined and it sort of eases off um, it's really nice like I said I'm I'm I've always been a fan of Johnny Walker blue now is it worth it that's a question I get a lot um, it depends it's sort of the same answer as as I gave for Dewar signature if you're willing to spend $300 on a whiskey um, and you like the Johnny Walker style, in this case, by all means, go for it. I'll say $300, $200 something, dollars, $250, whatever it is. Um, by all means, go for it. Uh, one of the big arguments I always hear is, well, it's not worth it. You can get better malts for the price, better single malts. Yes, there are a lot of great single malts, many, many, many great single malts, cheaper than Johnny Walker Blue, which is a blended whiskey. But when you're buying whiskey, it's not about better. It's about, because that's subjective. That's very subjective. Whiskey in general is subjective. I might love this. You might hate this. Um, and yes, there are a lot of great single malts out there for much cheaper, but when you're buying a bottle of whiskey, you're buying for the flavor experience that that bottle delivers. 
specifically what that bottle delivers. So where a Lagavulin 16 is much cheaper than this, it delivers a different flavor experience, a tasting experience than Johnny Walker Blue. Uh, I will say something else about Johnny Walker Blue. Um, it's very smooth, and I hate using that word, um, but I know a lot of uh, non-whiskey drinkers that would that might buy this love the smoothness of a whiskey. Um, it's very smooth, it's very well blended. There's a reason it's got the reputation that it does. Um, I highly recommend it. Highly, highly recommend it. So while I ponder about when I'm going to open the King George V back there, uh, which I know has some Port Ellen and some other really old rare blend or malts, I'm going to finish off my glass of Johnny Walker Blue. Um, I hope you uh, tune in next time for uh, Chivas Regal Altus. Um, we'll take a look at that and then sort of wrap up this the, the series with a comparison of the three. Um, so. Please uh, like the video if you liked it, uh, or if you're not, let me know why. And please subscribe if you like what you're watching. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.